Shares of Intel now negative after hours despite beating earnings estimates. Let's bring in Stacey Rascon from Bernstein Research. He has an underperformed rating on the stock. Stacey, what do you reckon uh, the share price was reacting to uh, up and then, and then now down? Yeah, so the, the results on the surface were, were actually in the quarter quite good. Revenue beat, gross margins were very strong, EPS was strong, so that's all fine. It's the implied guidance in the second half. So Q3 outlook is roughly in line. Gross margins are coming down materially, and because they give full year guidance, you can back into Q4. And while they took full year up, they basically they're effectively taking the back half down. And when you look at what's implied, especially for gross margins in Q4, they're going down to like the low 50s, probably 53%, at least what's embedded in guidance right now. That, that's probably what's taking the stock down right now is people looking at the trajectory of margins as we go through the year and, and entering into 2022, right? And there's still an open question right now, what do the transition economics look like? What does next year look like as some of the initiatives that they're doing really start go, get going? They're, they're investment intensive, for example. Um, and so, but it looks to me like as we get through the rest of the year, the, the margins and, and the structural economics of the company are coming down. And that's probably why the stock's down now. So does do this push back when people can get excited about this stock under Gelsinger? Or, or is it just a, a temporary blip, a, a short-term cyclical issue? Well, I mean, look... The, the issues that Intel has are, didn't show up in a quarter. They're the results of decisions that were made over the last five to 10 years. It's going to take years to fix everything. And so maybe people can get hope with Gelsinger there. And don't get me wrong, I actually like Pat a lot. I think he's the right guy for the job, but he's not a magician. And people are starting, I think, to realize that now. There's a couple of catalysts maybe coming up. The company's having like a webinar on Monday um, around process technology and packaging. And then they have an analyst day in November where we should get probably a better look at what 2022 and beyond might actually uh, look like. So those are ca coming up. But between now and then, you know, it's still up in the air. So what's going on with PC demand? It's been strong lately. Is that going to last? It's been incredibly strong lately. So, so let's, let's, let's set the stage. Massively above pre-COVID levels, right? And, and I mean, it was, it was up a ton last year. It's up a ton this year. The worry is that some of it's pulled forward, and I think understandably, right? We're modeling PCs down next year. I'm actually below the street next year, probably partially because of our PC assumptions. But I'm still modeling PCs way above pre-COVID levels. And so like, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see where, where things go. But certainly, there is a worry that the stronger PCs are right now, the worse it's going to look on the other side. So where does uh, Intel rank among your hierarchy of top picks? What is the top pick at the moment? I mean, like we're underperform on the stock. So I mean, it's like on, 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 the, on the negative side, certainly it would be our, our, our top short pick. Um, on the long side, we, we like a number of things, depending on what you're, you're looking for. But especially in this environment where people are nervous about the cycle, I actually kind of like Broadcom as sort of like a margin of safety with like a, a, good, um, uh, a good growth opportunity. They, they've got their semi business is sold out, so I don't really worry about cyclicality for a while. They have a software business which offers some support. They're going to do, do something with cash this year. Either they'll buy something or they'll do buybacks. Either way, I'm fine. Great dividend, highest margins in free cash in the industry, and it's the cheapest thing in my coverage except for Intel. So, like, what's not to like? Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.